All right, so today I want to explain what we mean by the term het pied marker. And if you've been in ball pythons for a while, you probably heard that term. And essentially what it is, is it means that somewhere on the snake there is a visual indication that it actually has one copy of the recessive pied mutation. And if you know about genetics, you probably know that with recessive genes, when you have one copy of the gene, you normally can't see any indication of that gene. That is pretty much the definition of a recessive mutation. As a matter of fact, like this snake around my neck here, this is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. This is actually a co-dominant mutation where this has one copy of the bamboo gene. If you actually had two copies of the bamboo gene, it would actually be an all-white snake. And if you bred that all-white snake to any other snake, all the offspring would have one copy of the bamboo gene. And with the co-dominant, you can actually see, yes, this looks a lot different than like a normal classic wild type ball python. You can definitely see one copy with a co-dominant mutation. But with the recessive mutation, typically you can't see any indication that looks like a completely normal snake. But in some cases, you can actually see some markers coming through, especially when you have a pie gene. And what I want to do today is I want to kind of walk you through. I want to show you what a pied looks like. I want to show you what some normals look like. And then I want to show you some of my normals that have het pied markers. And we can see a little indication of some of that pied coming through. All right, so I want to show you what a pied looks like. I actually just paired up my snakes just yesterday. I have a pied female. I'm crossing her with my fire pied. I want to open this really slow to see if they are locked in a copulation. And if they are, I really don't want to disturb them. I really want to get these guys breeding. This is the first day locked together. And it looks like, well, let's see. It kind of looks like... It looks like their tails are locked together. So I don't want to disturb them too much, but this is essentially what a pied looks like. The bigger one is the female pied. The smaller one has the fire gene in the mix, which lightens the dark spots a little bit. But this is essentially what we're talking about when we talk about a pied ball python. It's essentially just the splotches of white through the snake, and it's actually a recessive mutation. So you actually need two copies of the gene for a visual pied. All right, so this is Boomer, and Boomer is a male normal ball python. One of my hatchlings that hatched out this year, doing really good, getting nice and beefy. Look at how chunky he is, looking really good. And this is just like a classic wild type normal. No other genes in the mix, no heads or anything. And the 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 really the one thing that you really want to look for when you're looking for het pieds is markers along the belly. That's pretty much the biggest thing. And usually what it is. If you actually look at the belly of the snake right along the tail section it's usually sometimes it'll have like lines right down either side of the belly coming all the way down but I'd say it's most prominent right by the tail right before the vent and you can see on this one this one almost kind of tricks you because it does have a lot of black on either side has a pretty clear belly but it doesn't really have the the pied markers and if it had the pied markers essentially what you'd see it would almost be like someone took a sharpie and drew a line on either side of the belly all the way down to about the vent here, which is kind of interesting. And sometimes you can see those lines go all the way up the belly. And I would say usually head pied markers, you'll see them on about 50% of the, pie, the head pieds. You won't see them on all the head pieds. And keep in mind, if you actually saw a definite pattern on every single head pied, we would actually consider that that a co-dominant instead of a recessive because you could actually see it on one copy of the gene. And that's why it's called a marker because it's not really uh, enough to see on every single snake that pushes it into a co-dominant category. It's just a little indication on some snakes where you can actually see that there is the het pied influence. All right, so take a look at this snake. This one we named Electra, and Electra is another male normal. This one's actually 100% head pied, 50% head caramel albino. And the, the funny thing is, is you know, there's a lot of recessive genes like the caramel albino, the pines, the ultramel, the tristripe, the sunset. There's all these different ones like the clown and all that. And a lot of them, you actually can't see any markers as far as the heads. And the only one that I really know of for sure that you can actually 
actually see pretty reliably is the head pods. And if you actually look at this one, we know this one is 100% head pied from the breeding because of the one of the parents was a visual pied. So all the offspring in this entire clutch, we know for sure is 100% head pied. And if you look at the tail, this is what we're talking about right on the tail, right before the vent at the very bottom right here. And if you look at the, the two lines right on either side of the tail right there, it looks like someone took a Sharpie and just drew a line right down here and right down here. That is the telltale het pied markers on a normal ball python. All right, take a look at this beautiful snake. This is Bones. This is a female pinstripe, 100% het albino, 100% het pied. And as far as I know, on any snakes, I've never seen any kind of a marker for a het albino. So this is truly recessive when it comes to albinos. You definitely can't see any type of indication that it is het albino other than from the pairing. So the, the father on this clutch was actually a visual albino albino pied and the female that the mother of this clutch was actually a pinstripe the mother looked exactly like this a beautiful pinstripe I love these pinstripes they are so intense and actually if you take a look at the belly on this one this one actually let's see if I can get them underneath here if you look at the belly on this one there are no pied markers whatsoever on the belly of the snake no lines on either side of the belly all the way down and I would say the the limitation of the het pied markers are that you can only see it in normal classic wild type ball pythons if you have any other genes in the mix as far as I know every single gene that I've seen kind of masks the het pied markers you can only see the het pied tracks when it comes to just a regular classic wild type ball python you can't really see it in anything else which is kind of frustrating because I have a lot of like core glows and stuff like that that are 50% het pied but you really can't know one way or the other because the coral glow masks the tracks on the bottom. You can't see them at all. All right, so take a look at this girl. This is, we named this one Savage. This is a female, normal, but it is a triple het. Het albino, het pied, and het clown. And it's a really interesting combo. I've never actually produced, I've never actually seen triple heads, albino, pied clowns before until I produced them this year. I actually produced six of them. And if you actually take a look at the belly on this one, take a look at this. You couldn't really tell just from looking at the belly that this one is het pied at all. Doesn't really have the lines on the belly coming down. It almost looks like a completely normal belly. This girl, this girl is a little ticklish. She's kind of freaking out a little bit. And the other thing I've also noticed is I was actually looking at a YouTube video. Someone was saying, hey, I have some something I think is a het clown marker on some of my snakes. And they were looking through some of their het clowns. And sure enough, they said on the, they had actually right past the vent they had one solid line that came down right in the middle all the way almost to the tip of the tail on their head clowns and I went through all six of my triple heads and none of them had that line going right from the vent to the tail so I'm not sure if that head clown marker is actually very reliable at least I'm not seeing it on my snakes and let me tell you even the head pides are not that reliable because you can't see it at all on this snake it's definitely uh, if someone had me this snake, I would say this is pretty much looks like a normal wild type ball python. But I know from the pairing, this was actually my albino pied male that I crossed with my clown female. So I know for sure this is triple hat for albino pied and clown. So this is a really interesting snake. This was actually one of my hatchlings from last year, not this year. She's getting really big and beefy. And the funny thing about this is actually, if you look at her pattern, her pattern's really jumbled up. And I showed this to a lot of people online and people were saying that they had a lot of het pides that had a really kind of a jumbled up pattern like this. It wasn't looking like a normal pattern. Although I think there's something else going on in the snake. I can't say for 
for sure, but this looks completely different than anything I have ever hatched out. I've hatched out quite a few head pods and I've never seen anything like this. This was actually one of my normal females that I crossed with my Coral Glow 100% head pod. So this girl is actually just considered a normal 50% head pod, but I think there's something else going on here. And if you actually look at her tail underneath, if she'll actually let me do it, she's kind of running today, going all over. But if you look at her tail, you can almost see the head pied markers on there. She's like really just running today. Let's see if I can let's see if I can pick her up and show you this. I want to show you the bottom of the tail. It has really obvious het pied markers right on the bottom. Pretty obvious coming right down towards the vent. You can see the lines pretty much on either side of the belly. But the interesting thing I find about, about this girl is look at her belly scales, how, how close together they are. It almost seems like she has a really reduced, it's, it's, I'd, I'd say in most ball python, the belly scales are a lot wider than we're actually seeing in this girl. I don't know what's going on with this girl. She's looking really wild but the interesting thing is if there's actually another gene in here uh, pr as far as everything that I've seen most genes will actually mask the het pied markers and we're actually seeing the het pied markers so I don't know what's going on with this girl uh, I've actually showed this to a lot of people and some people are like oh yeah yeah there's something going on with that snake it's really interesting and then some people actually say that they've had a lot of het pieds that just have crazy mixed up patterns almost looks like the the snake and you get some really like like almost kind of the 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 white coming up the side and the really crazy broke up pattern a lot of people are saying that their head pieds actually look really similar to this girl so it could be that this is just one extreme example of one big huge head pied marker or there could be something going on I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards maybe there's just something going on as far as uh, some kind of influence with the head pie because if there was another gene, I would say you probably wouldn't see these tracks along the belly where it kind of looks like het pied coming down here. It almost looks like someone took a marker and drew the het pied, especially right down here at the end of the tail. I'd say this is kind of a unique example, kind of my dinker project that I'm playing around with. Not sure if she's just het pied or something in there, but it's a really interesting snake. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Curtis Ramsey asks, what do the multiple binder clips on your snake tubs mean? And that is a very good question. Essentially what it is, is it's my own little internal system to kind of track which snakes eat how many rodents. And I know a lot of people will track it like in an Excel spreadsheet or they'll keep it in a notebook written down. And I kind of went away from that and I just track, I'd say the last maybe four or five weeks of feedings. And every time I feed a snake, I'll put a clip over on the right. And then if they don't eat, I won't put a clip on there so you can actually see if you just do a quick look at my rack behind me you can see some snakes are really voracious eaters eating every single time some of them just had a few meals over the last few weeks and some of them have been fasting and when it comes time to feeding it really helps me figure out which snakes to feed first usually I attempt to feed the ones that are really picky feeders or that are fasting I'll try to feed those snakes first knowing that I can actually use up those rodents with the ones that are eating a lot every single time. I like to start with a fewer number of rodents so I don't have extra rodents and end up with a lot of extras that I have to throw away, especially if you're doing frozen thawed. It works really good. And then it also helps me to kind of help along some of the ones that have been fasting or the ones that have been really picky. So what I'll do is, so for example, it's, it's pretty much at the end of a feeding cycle and I would say I don't really have a timeline. I'd say it's like five or six weeks and I pretty much almost start running out of clips and at that point what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll take all the clips off and pretty much start the whole cycle over again. So I'm pretty much at the end of the cycle and I was looking at my rack saying all right there's like five snakes that have not eaten in this whole cycle and as a matter of fact the last cycle they haven't eaten. So what I actually did is I followed up with some really small live rats and all of those snakes actually ate. I really don't like to do live but if they're really strong struggling and lagging behind, especially if they don't have a really good body condition, I'll, f I'll follow up with a live rat. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.